you know my sock universe reviewing what has been happening on the weekend or during the week I have to say in Austria and in Germany we had two rounds in Austria we had a almost full round in Germany to talk about except these guys didn't play but they played somewhere else which we also talk about the club world cup and Headline number one, world champions Bayern Munich. So I decided, although Lusk had a six point week, second headline, um, that I would gonna wear Bayern because you know how often uh, can you celebrate a world champion? Full disclaimer, I don't put much credence into this tournament, but I know it makes a really nice thingy that I was even thinking of putting on my Liverpool jersey. It is really nice to have this little patch on there and so Bayern now has it. Bayern of course completing a uh, sextuple, uh, meaning they won all six trophies, second team ever to do it, after of course Barcelona in 08 09. Um, other than that, in the Bundesliga a lot of stalemate. That's the other headline that we have and in Austria, yeah, um, Salzburg staying on track more or less. I think that's the um, having to come back twice. I would say I really want to start in Austria because we had the midweek round there and there were a lot of things happening. Of course one game was at first postponed uh, because of snow and yeah if you play in Austria in uh, January and February there are some certain regions that get a lot of snow and that's Hartberg is one of those so uh, not too surprising. Sturm Graz uh, dominated the game but had to give up an equalizer where we're still not sure whether it was actually in but there's no VAR in Austria yet and then very late on uh, in the 95th minute a uh, free kick gives Sturm Graz a 2-1 uh, win. Rapid gets a very nasty uh, win over Wolfsburg. I mean this was not a great game at all however uh, the goalkeeper helped to get them a 1-0 win. Uh, Lask played in St. Pertin the day after and I have to say this was a game that they thoroughly dominated and it still could have gone all wrong. Um, they got the early early goal with Michael scoring a rare header, uh, had numerous chances you should have made the goal earlier However, uh, it is then a penalty in the 32nd that gives them the 2 nil. And last penalty is a long story, but this time, yes, it was fine. And we had a new penalty taker with Wiesinger, a, a defender, who with a really nice technique pulled it into internet. After the half, you need to make the 3 nil. They didn't make it, and so Mohamed Begovic uh, makes it a 1-2 with more or less the first shot on goal for Sankt St. Burton. In the 66, shortly after, they could have made it 2-2 before that Lask should have made it 3-1 they get the finally then they were a little bit you know St. Burton was really coming this is a team that is basically struggling a little bit to get back in winning ways fortunately very late on um, Michal with another header that's his second ever in the Bundesliga a little bit like Zidane in the World Cup final very small version of it gives Lask a 3-1 win uh, Salzburg I had some trouble with Austria. Yes, more chances, better, but Austria played it well uh, for about 60 minutes when they took the lead in the 59th. However, Koita immediately equalizes and then Aronson uh, makes it 2-1 and then later on it's 3-1. So Austria, Vienna, hoping to get into the top six will be a struggle. Um, they could have gotten some something after they had not much chance in the cup game, but this time they actually had. Then we had uh, on Saturday Rapid Vienna having won 5 5 hours, suddenly they dropped points in a game. Yes, it was probably they could have had a penalty early on. Then there was a red uh, card for Altach, and then Altach does what they do best shut up shop. Rapid had chances but could not convert. Tirol. The surprise team of the season. I mean that just to appreciate that this team was relegated and if it wasn't for the combustion of um, Mattersburg this team would play in the second division now. They didn't know one week ahead of the start of the season that they will play in the Bundesliga uh, and they had to scramble to get a team together and now they're playing a super season. Twice they were leading Salzburg. Tenth in the co uh, Koch Gives, gives them a lead. In the 78th, they take uh, they take the lead through a penalty. 
2-1 against Salzburg. And I have to say, since the Swarovski, this, I mean, it's basically Vattens, close to in, in, in this book, uh, heavily sponsored by Swarovski. And so they also have shiny numbers on the back. You think they could pill pull at the upset, but Salzburg uh, again late turns it around with three goals. In the 79th, Berisha equalizes, and Daka and Koita in the 89th and the 99th make it 4 2. Um, and then the big uh, other game that we have talked about was just finished uh, was in this afternoon, was Lask against Sturm Graz. Uh, first half that was super, super uh, tight, intense, but not many chances. There was one big for Sturm where uh, the goalie for Lask saved well and then basically with the halftime whistle uh, the ball comes a uh, Ramftl kind of uh, lobs it with the back to goal over the defense and Eggestein just gets there and doesn't even touch it uh, properly but it takes such a weird um, route into in the goal it kind of lobs it because of that over the goal goalkeeper it's 1-0 Lask that gave Lusk a whole lot of um, um, strength for the second half because the, sec it's, it's the first half they had really had trouble. I mean, it started out well, but uh, Sturm kept it tight. Sec second half, much, much better from Lusk. They had large, large control, had a few chances that they should have made. Sturm had only one free kick that could have been dead, 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 dead dangerous, but it wasn't. And then Balic, uh, after an Eggestein assist, who came on in the 62nd. In the 60th minute, Lask is doing at least two of the changes because then they have to change the uh, front line in, in, in a way. Uh, he takes a shot, he probably should have shot earlier, he takes a shot and then uh, it hits a defender, goes in the net. Easy 2-0 win. I think I, I thought they could go for 3-0 as well, but I, I think a 2-0 is uh, the fair result here. And as much as we have trouble against Rapid, we have no trouble against Sturm. That's uh, pretty clear as well. So now with all these um, results, we have the following standings okay. with a huge six-point week. Can leapfrog Sturm Graz, Rapid dropping off, uh, getting closer to Lask. Of course, everyone is now, uh, the first four are pretty sure, surely in the playoff round that we will have uh, shortly after. And with the, I didn't talk about it, Austrian lost the uh, home to Hartberg. Huge, 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 huge. Uh, lost there, uh, which means that Wolfsburg and Tirol now really look safe. Hartberg maybe has an outside chance there. Yes, right. Hartberg has has a game in hand, so maybe for that we need, need it just, and with that Hartberg would actually go ahead of Austria Wien, which is good, but uh, the way Tirol is playing, it's not a given that this, it will go this way. And uh, for the regular season standings, the finals, we see one, two, three, four now pretty much set. Just before it was Sturm and Lask very much close, but with that win, Lask can separate themselves from Sturm, maybe having a slight chance to go ahead of Rapid. Although uh, that might be a little bit too much asking Tirol and Wolfsburg go for five and six. It is pretty clear who is in the top six and who is in ball bottom six. It's a dogfight for relegation between Altach and Admira. And the final standings, I'm very happy to report Lask again in second place, uh, just ahead of Rapid. They are neck to neck, thanks, and uh, always have, have, have in mind that after the regular season, the points are halved, so that's why Lask actually looks quite good there. And yeah, uh, Salzburg most likely champions, and then uh, the rest uh, by determines itself by itself. Next week we have a big one between Salzburg and Rapid, uh, where you know if things go right, Lask could actually draw level with uh, Rapid if Salzburg um, wins and Lask wins as well. Uh, I think those and then Sturm against Wolfsburg is another uh, rather interesting one, uh, especially since the Sturm Graz coach was actually uh, the coach of Wolfsburg. Moving on, Club World Cup. Um, Bayern Munich had the trip from hell after they played Hertha Friday evening, went there, had to play then on Monday against Al Ahli. Uh, they won 2 0 with two Lewandowski goals. Uh, but you know, that was the least story. It's just that the trip there, they had to basically sleep on the airplane, more or less, something like that. In any case, I think the big story from Fortuna is not Bayern winning. I mean, they did it uh, relatively easy over Al Ahli. They also won relatively easy over Tigres. The goal scoreline in the final with 1-0 
was much tighter than it actually sure should have been because I think there were two uh, buy by goals were even um, called off. So it was rather easy. For me, the big storyline store is that Palmeiras did not make it to the final and they only finished in fourth place. They lose to Tigres, who are riding Gignac to, into the final, and they're the first CONCACAF team to make it to uh, the final. Which from our border here could become something re regular because South American teams and Mexican teams are way much more level than one would expect. So congratulations Bayern Munich for winning the Club Club World Cup. For this for this round, Leipzig labored win over Augsburg and then a whole lot of draws. Look at that. Only Frankfurt getting a 2-0 win. Everything else ends in draws. It's rather, rather remarkable, I have, have to say. This is uh, almost unheard of in the Bundesliga. Um, let's go through a few games here. Uh, Dortmund-Hoffenheim. That was actually a rather difficult game. I mean, Sancho gives Dortmund the lead, but then Munoz de Boer equalizes. Uh, Bebu right after have made me mix it to one and then Haaland goal correctly is called off for offside and very very late on I mean it was dire time Haaland gets the equalizer but too little one has to say for Dortmund uh, the, uh, the next game Stuttgart against Hertha Stuttgart completely completely uh, had that game under control Kalajic giving them a goal right there right before the halftime should have made it two they don't and so um, Hertha get a late equalizer through nets a little bit lucky but they get it and so it ends 1-1 probably the most surprising one is the first one here between Leverkusen and Mainz where Leverkusen had a 2-0 lead you thought this game is done and dusted in the uh, 84th minute when Schick makes it 2-0 Alario getting the first goal but in the second half already uh, Mainz had many many chances to make it 1-1 uh, Glatzl in the 89th and then very little on Kevin Stöger Austrian equalizes in the 92nd minute so uh, to give Mainz a deserved 2-2 uh, draw but you know you have to look at Leverkusen they should actually make more points Frankfurt totally deserved a 2-0 win over Köln however uh, carnival time is now so uh, the carnival jersey should be here I'll probably make uh, a special video about that one to celebrate carnival with you guys who gets the goals for Frankfurt? Of course, Andre Silva gets one and after a Kostic assist. Who has the most assists in the Bundesliga? And Andre Silva is only behind uh, Lewandowski in the Bundesliga. And I realize if you look here, the teams, I don't have anyone from the top teams currently, and I'm working on that. I know I need to get uh, Frankfurt, Wolfsburg, and Leverkusen. Will not happen next month, but will maybe happen thereafter I hope for some sales to get jerseys from these teams which will also make it a little bit less white and a little bit more interesting color wise up there uh, I saw also the second half of Wolfsburg Gladbach the first half was rather boring the second half was very interesting with slight advantage Wolfsburg but both teams could have scored but maybe didn't really deserve to get scored uh, it was super cold and I was amazed how many Austrian and Swiss players were on the field in that one. I'm also amazed that uh, Wolfsburg only had one exchange in the entire game and also Gladbach only two. So uh, pretty remarkable. Later on I thought Schlager had made the goal but it was not to be. With all that, yeah, we have the following standings. I mean Bayern clear on top, 92 Bayern are champ champions. Uh, Leipzig. Pretty clear in second place and I think one of the bigger stories is that Upamecano is moving from Leipzig to Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich again uh, taking the best players from the next best team at the moment. Uh, so the top two are pretty clear but I think the chase for the remaining Champions League spot, that's super exciting in the Bundesliga. Frankfurt and Wolfsburg at the moment, Frankfurt leapfrog and Wolfsburg are in pole position and that is rather remar remarkable. I really actually hope that those two will finish in there, but let's see. Leverkusen uh, behind Dortmund and Gladbach might be out of it. On, on, honestly, and their big chance is now in the Champions League. For Dortmund, it would be a huge disaster, but now it's only 29%. I mean, they're far off, and it's a really, 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 really tough ask for them to get in there. Uh, we actually can adjust a little bit, but it doesn't change much, except that Bielefeld, with two games less, is of course ahead of Hertha. Hertha seemingly in trouble and the next few games for Hertha are such that they won't make many points. We have to see how Bielefeld is doing. I mean uh, the home game 
that they have in hand against Bremen maybe they can get something from there but you also have to note that the one against Bayern they probably lose uh, maybe by the time you're watching you already know what the result is expected final standings is Bayern uh, nine points clear now uh, expected ahead of Leipzig Wolfsburg and Frankfurt now in three and four I would be really really uh, excited if that happens but Leverkusen and Dortmund still have a say Gladbach more or less out of it on the bottom Bielefeld Mainz Schalke yeah, doesn't look good. Uh, for those Köln just staying in and Hertha also still staying in, but uh, Hertha is a cluster mess par excellence. Um, the next round, I have to say, I think Frankfurt Bayern is a really, really interesting game. There, uh, that someone I'm looking forward to. We have the big derbies in Schalke and Dortmund, but yeah, this is a derby of misery. Um, Hertha Leipzig has big implications already i have to say so uh, a few interesting games gladbach mines i also don't see much so yeah a lot of things to go i also want to note bielefeld playing on monday and on friday given that they have not been playing for a long time uh it's also an interesting part for some reason Colin stuttgart but it is because those are teams that i like let me know what you thought about the games if you've seen any give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and yeah i'll talk to you soon bye Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell icon as it will remind you whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!